we live, we live. You know, um, you know, I'm, I'm here. You know, what I mean, we posted. Just want to let y'all know this is my guy. His name Rashawn, Rashawn Jackson. Shiz, He's been in prison over two decades for something he ain't do. There's a, there's a, um, you know, there's a person that admitted to the crime, confessed to the crime, and everything. You know, the lawyers in Philadelphia, they on top of it right now. You got a hearing coming up real soon, and um. You know, he's just spending his time trying to keep his mind right. You know what I mean? Keep his body fit. And, uh, you know, just like just like I told y'all I was coming, I'm letting you know he coming too. This is what he bringing right now. You got a uh, something he wrote called, Do Black Lives Really Matter? And hear him out, see, you know, see what his mind like. All right. The late Che Guevara once said, one doesn't wait for the right conditions for revolution. The forces of revolution itself will make the conditions right. Black man, it's time for us to start a revolution. We have an enemy that continues to get in the way of our progress that we attempt to make in this country. This enemy won't ever see or recognize just how precious and beautiful a black life really is. This enemy won't ever see or recognize just how precious our black woman is and how worthy she is of our respect. This enemy will never allow our black men to save the lives of our youth by any means necessary. This enemy will continue to sell and distribute drugs in our black communities. This enemy will continue to rob our black people and prey upon them. This enemy will continue to make the killing of another black man seem marketable and profitable. And this enemy will continue to destroy our black race from within if we don't resist and start identifying who this enemy truly is. Well, you don't have to look any further, because I did the black race a favor, and I have identified this enemy for us. And it wasn't hard, because our true enemy is us. This revolution has to be fought against us in order to save us. What do I mean by this? I'll tell you. Our ancestors went through countless whippings, lynchings, tortures, hangings, and cold-blooded murders just for us to have the rights and privileges that we have today. Our ancestors died brutal deaths at the hands of white cowards with sheets on their heads. And for what? What did they die for? So instead of that white devil killing us with that white sheet on his head, he could take it off and pass it to you so that you could kill us? Is this with all of the pain and misery, the marching, the boycott, the race riots, the imprisonments, the brutal rapes of our women, the brutal deaths of our black children? Is this what it was all about? So that once our ancestors sacrificed their lives to help us get a taste of freedom, we would use that freedom to take the life of our black brother or black sister. Is this really what we are doing with our small taste of freedom, black people? We are uniting and marching every time a white cop is unjustified and brutally killing a black man. But black man, what about when we are brutally killing a black man? Does a black life only matter when a white man is taking a black life unjustly? Or does it also matter when a black man is unjust and taking a black life? We have placed such a small merit on a black life, but we will not hesitate to murder our black brothers and sisters in the most cruel and harshest ways. And some of our black youth have become so indoctrinated with our oppressive doses of selfie that they now post a video of themselves killing another black man online so that they could receive their share of accolades for assisting in the genocide of our black race. So what are we really marching for? Is it to convince the white race that black lives matter? Or is it to convince black people that black lives matter? Because right now, it appears like we are trying to surpass the white man's percentage of black lives that were killed unjustly by creating our own percentage of black lives that we are taking by means of self-genocide. We have developed this deeply rooted element of self-hatred so remarkably that unless we can hear about the killing of another black man or black woman or the degrading of another black woman in our music, in our videos, or out of one another's mouths, then we won't promote that ideology and we can't even function properly in our own culture. We won't spend our hard-earned money on an artist unless their music promotes self-hatred or some other form of self-destructive melody that we can nod our toxic little heads to. If it's not poison, that will harm or kill us in some type of way, and it's not counterproductive or it's conducive to our failure. We don't want any parts of it. If this what we have become black people, after we have marched and legislated enough momentum for the white race to recognize us as a force to be reckoned with, and they finally
finally decide to stop killing us. Black people, when will we stop killing us? When are we going to start telling ourselves that black lives matter, black people? Or better yet, when will we believe that black lives matter, black people? Because until we have convinced ourselves and we begin to start treating ourselves and acting like black lives matter, they never will. And we can't continue to blame the right race for our problems in 2021 because we are not doing anything but the rights and privileges that our brave ancestors fought and died for just so that we can even the playing field a little. And we can't keep pointing the finger at the cat for killing a mouse because it's in his nature. But what is our excuse for killing each other after we finally made it halfway up the mountaintop? So I got a question that I want to ask my beautiful, strong, precious black race. And I want you to really take some time out to think about this before you just answer it. My question to you, my precious black race, is this. The next time you are about to hurt or kill another black woman, or you are about to verbally disrespect or mentally and physically abuse another black woman or harm or kill her, or the next time you leave another black woman that you impregnated to raise your seed on your or on her own, or the next time we step on each other instead of lifting each other up, or the next time we think about posting a video of us killing another black man or woman, or we decide to violate and degrade each other just so we can get some extra likes on Instagram, I want you to ask yourself, black people, does black lives really matter? Because if we're not going to start treating each other like our black lives matter, then don't start expecting them to treat us like our black lives matter, because it all starts with us first. Remember that. Peace. I love y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have one minute left. Hey, that was right on. That was right on time, man. I, I told you. Yeah, I, I like told that, you, bro. Hey, listen. If you call back, if you call back in a half hour, I'll be on my way out the door. Um, I mean, I could, I could talk to you, but I ain't gonna really have time to uh to put listen, you back on. What I need you to do. I need you to hit Scuddy back and tell him that I need a line on Kara. I need Kara phone number. Kara, that's the same that, yeah. that other girl, right? Right. I need that's that's who hooked me up with her. Tell him I need her and his and his and his baby mom best friends. Tell him I need a phone number for Kara. All right, I got you. All right, listen, bro. I love you. Stay safe. Stay focused, man. I knew you would love that joint too, bro. Yeah. I knew that, man. I knew that. Yeah. And Jane, have you sent it to me? I'll publish it on my own page for you. Thank you for using. All right, I got you. Goodbye.